In this report, I share a word of caution. Don't retire in the Philippines until you watch this. Last week, I did a video called Why the Philippines are Best in the Entire World for Retired Singles. Well, today I'm reading comments on that video. Some of you vagabonders made some really great counter arguments that I want to share and answer directly in this video. The fact is my channel has some of the smartest, most experienced travelers in the world listening and commenting on the information I share in my videos. They know personally how much time and money the right information can save them when they are traveling. So they share their counter ideas and more detailed information in the comments when they have important information they have often learned the hard way. So now I'm going to share some of their comments and expand on some of their ideas. I will put a link to the YouTube video they are commenting upon so you can watch that video and read their comments if you like. Jeff's comment is that the Philippines are too hot and humid and destructive annual typhoons. Je Jeff makes a great point here. There are five super typhoons that struck the northern Pacific during the 2021 typhoon season that did 1.8 billion U.S. in damage. And as usual, the Philippines often took the lion's share of the damage because of its location in the northern Pacific link provided. Uh, in fact, there are four kinds of natural disasters that the Philippines suffer from. Typhoons, volcanoes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. The truth is, where you decide to live in the Philippines makes a big difference in the frequency and occurrence of these four kinds of natural disasters. So I studied natural disasters in the Philippines a few months ago and wrote a report called Saving Your Philippines Retirement from Natural Disaster. If you want to know my thoughts about where to live in the Philippines to reduce, but not completely eliminate your risk from these four kinds of natural disasters, make sure to read that report or watch that video link provided. Thanks for the great point, Jeff. Next, we received a comment from someone with the screen name Alphabet, who said, yeah, fully agree the Philippine women are much better than others. They don't try to hook up with foreigners and try to extort money from the retirees hoping to get all of your assets. In fact, we received several comments about the differences between Thai and Filipina women on this video or the other video, uh, which one is better and why they think so. So here are my thoughts about the differences between women in the Philippines and Thailand. We can generalize about people around the world and it can save us time by assuming generalizations are accurate when we first meet a person. But we still need to observe people as individuals when we meet them to see if they fit the generalization or if they are an outlier. For example, both the Philippines and Thailand have what I would call good people that are just looking for a real and authentic relationship with someone that they can honestly love and will honestly love them in return. In the Philippines, you're more likely to find someone like this that remains in the area where their family lives but you may also meet them in larger cities if they are presently living in a larger city for employment purposes. But if they moved to the city to work in the sex industry, they will quickly lose that part of themselves that will still, you know, that still believes in true love. Love quickly becomes transactional uh, when they lose that part of themselves. The same is also true in Thailand. If they've moved to the city for uh, non-sex industry employment, that might be okay but they'll become jaded rather quickly if they're working in the sex trade. So in both the Philippines and Thailand, you're more likely to find long-term relationship material if you stay away from people that are working in the sex industry. I have another report that explains the top 10 mistakes that international retirees make, link provided. Stated more simply, just fish in the right pond if you're looking for long-term love. You can find true love in both the Philippines and Thailand if you take your time to get to know someone and you look for red flags along the way. What country you are fishing in will only take you so far. You still have to let time pass to know if someone's right for you. You should also realize that the country your lover was born in plays a big role in whether or not they can travel around the world with you. Citizens of some countries have a very difficult time traveling because they need to get tourist visas everywhere. I have created a report to help you understand this challenge. It's called The Best Countries to Find Love in Retirement, link provided. Next, David Williams shared that some of us suffer from island syndrome. The Philippines is a great 
place to vacation, he says, but for a guy like me who likes to get in the car and go on long road trips and experience new places, new restaurants, and new people, the Philippines are a no-go. Uh, thanks for your thoughts. Uh, thanks for sharing, David. I, I hear two different issues in David's comment. The first is island fever. Island fever is when you feel almost claustrophobic from living on an isolated island. The other issue I hear is America's love affair with the automobile and driving down wide open roads that never seem to end. I will address these two points separately, starting with America's love of automobiles. My father was in the Navy stationed in Oakland, California when I was a young boy. The only way we would afford to see visit family in Chicago in the 1960s was by driving there. So I come from a family that loved cars and enjoyed the open road. I remember waking once in the middle of the night when my mother was telling my dad to slow down. My dad was driving at over 100 miles per hour on the open road, somewhere between California and Chicago. They had no speed limits back then. I heard my dad reply to my mother, the reason we bought a station wagon with a 383 Hemi is so we can get to Chicago quicker by driving at night when there are no other cars on the open road. I would guess it was about 2 a.m. When, when I heard him say that. The sky was filled with stars you will never see if you lived near city lights. David's right. There are no open roads in the Philippines where you can experience your love of driving a car on the wide open road. Instead, many expats don't even own cars in the Philippines. Expats mainly ride scooters, small buses called jeepneys, and tricycle motorcycle taxis and ferries from island to island. If you want to continue your love affair with cars in the Philippines, you're probably barking up the wrong tree. Now, I've never experienced island fever myself, but a friend that lives in Hawaii says it is real. But unlike Hawaii, the Philippines have over 7,000 islands that are near each other. Some islands are so small they don't even have cars, but many islands do have automobiles. All of the islands in the Philippines that have cars also have ferry ports to adjacent islands. You can drive your car or motor scooter right up onto the ferry and it will take your vehicle to another island. Technically, you can drive from one end of the Philippines to the other by using this ferry network. I do agree the Philippines are not as car friendly as other countries like the United States or Australia. But if you love to experience new places, new restaurants and new people when the road ends in front of you, you just drive your car up onto a ferry to a series of islands that never seems to end. Thanks for sharing that thought with us, David. Okay, before I share the next reason that the Philippines are a struggle as compared to other places, I want to point out that the previous video already shared three problems faced when living in the Philippines. First, in that video, I mentioned that you need to think about where to live in the Philippines if your health is a concern for you. Many parts of the Philippines are a long way from a hospital that you might need to save your life in an emergency. The second thing I already mentioned was that the infrastructure is not that good in the Philippines. And if you decide to ride a scooter in the Philippines, you need to drive slowly so you have time to adjust or stop if you encounter a large pothole in the street or other obstruction. And third, I mentioned that how the local food will be unfamiliar to many of you and you might be tempted to eat in budget busting, expensive tour style restaurants in the Philippines if you don't know how to learn how to cook. Finally, Andrew A. left the following comment. Uh, marijuana is highly illegal in the Philippines, so it's not for me. The women there are certainly willing to hook up with a Western guy, but that's not all I'm looking for in life. Andrew is right. Not just marijuana sales, but also marijuana cultivation in use is illegal in the Philippines. Drug dealers are actually executed in some cases in the Philippines. Yet marijuana and meth remain commonly available in the Philippines. In my report, Top 10 Mistakes International Retirees Make, I explain why you should stay away from drugs and prostitution. That report explains that by associating, associating with criminals, you are opening yourself up to the highest safety risk that might become, you might become isolated and preyed upon by the criminal element that exists all over the world, even in your home country. This is an audience directed channel, an audience directed ebook membership. That means I create videos and ebooks based upon audience suggestions and questions in the video comments. I keep a lot of your suggestions made in the comments and I cover them as my way of thanking you for keeping my channel 
and ebook membership interesting to vagabonders all over the world. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, the YouTube channel for vagabondbooter.com. The world is your home. What time will you be home for dinner? Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video to get a copy of this content. Plus, grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 13 Years. While you're there, check out our catalog of retired cheap reports all over the world and our hobby income course that we just released. Thanks so much.